episode of Smitty's Gunsmith. In today's episode, I'm going to be going over how to do a AR-15 trigger job. This trigger job I'm going to show you guys is completely, well, I'm going to say it's almost completely reliable within reason. And it's completely safe. And I have done quite a bit of testing with this method and it's yielded great results for me. Um, the only issue you could run into with this trigger job is going to be the possibility of some light primer strikes with foreign made or military grade primers. Um, however, with that being said, I have done this trigger job on my personal rifle and testing it for all kind of different ammunition. Um, military made, um, foreign made. Um, I've ran just about any kind of ammunition you can think of through my gun. I've had no issues with light primer strikes. And that's going to be in part due to a modification we're going to make. And I'm going to show you how to do to the hammer. Now, that being said, I urge you, if you use this trigger modification on any weapon that you're going to use for defensive purposes, or if you use this on um, any duty weapon that you're allowed to modify, uh, if your particular agency or organization allows you to modify your duty weapons, make sure that you utilize, test this extensively for whatever kind of ammunition you're going to be utilizing for defensive purposes or duty carry make sure that you get reliable ignition on all your primers because the last thing you want to have happen on a duty ammo or a defensive gun or on a duty gun or a defensive gun is have your ammo fail to go off when you need it to um, with that being said i've used it on you know i've tested all kinds of ammo and i've had zero problems with ignition and i'm going to go over how to manage that if um, a little bit later in the video also parts of this video are going to be sped up so you don't have to sit there and sit through a whole bunch of um, very tedious, boring, um, lengthy work. The modification that I'm going to show you guys how to do is going to take your factory hammer and trigger and leave them as is. Well, we're going to use the same hammer and trigger. We're not going to leave the hammer as is. We're going to leave the trigger as is. But we're going to change out the springs. Okay. After we change out the springs to make your hammer compatible with the new spring weight, we're going to modify the hammer. Um, what we're going to be using for the product, this is a very cheap and inexpensive trigger job. If you don't want to get putting money into a Gazelle or Geisley trigger, however it's pronounced, or a Timmy trigger, or some other high end custom trigger that usually runs on $100 to $300 or $400. You can utilize your existing hammer and trigger if you've got a decent one to start with. You can buy this spring spring kit here from JP Enterprises. This is their enhanced reliability AR fire control spring set. It's got a red paint covered uh, hammer, and a yellow hammer spring, and a yellow coated trigger spring, and a disconnector spring. So. To start off with, I'm going to use this trigger jig. I'm going to install these components. This is factory components. Into the trigger jig so I can show you how an AR-15 trigger system operates. And we're going to use this as a baseline to get a trigger pull weight. This is a little more difficult than installing an actual rifle receiver. Because these springs want to sometimes jump out of place. But in this case it didn't. Okay. This will also allow us to test our trigger pull safely without risk and damage in the rifle. On uh, AR-15 lower receiver, you do not want to 
let the hammer fall against your receiver and your bolt catch, bolt stop. Okay, you can damage your receiver and or this lever right here. This trigger jig has a rubber hardened um, post right here on the top that the hammer falls on so it doesn't damage anything. So to begin with, I'm going to lock this into our test vise right here, or our vise to hold it. I don't have this mounted down, I don't really have to have it mounted down for what we're going to do. Everything out of the way. I'm using a Wheeler Engineering Digital Trigger Pull Gauge. Let me turn this on. Let's put on my trigger. I'm going to pull straight back. Okay. My first reading was 4 pounds, 13.3 ounces. Reset my hammer. Put this back on my trigger. Second rating was six pounds, 0.8 ounces. And you're gonna get some variation on this. I found if you just put it on there and pull it really quickly, you get a lot of reading. If you slowly pull it until it goes off, you're gonna get a heavier reading. This isn't probably the most accurate trigger pull scale in the market, <coughs> um, but it works. And uh, I take an average of usually five pulls and get a five pull average. This will show you the, the peak, the minimum, and the average. So we're gonna start on our third pull here. Okay, six pounds, 4.9 ounces. Reset the hammer. And I know I messed up on that and I'm gonna delete that one. Go back in for our first pull again. Okay, five pound, 14 ounces. Kind of hard to see what I'm doing from back here. Okay, four pound 13 ounces. And I'm gonna go with one more. Six pound 1.5. Okay. That's gonna give us an average pull of five pounds, 5.6 ounces. On a maximum of six pounds, 4.9 ounces, and a minimum of four pounds, 13.0 ounces. Okay, cut this off, sit it out of the way. Take this back out of the vise, sit the vise out of the way. Now, on most factory rifles, you're going to find the trigger pull is going to average usually between five and eight and a half pounds. There's a lot of variation, a lot of different companies making parts, a lot of variation in the manufacturing, so you, you know, every, every rifle is going to potentially be different. But you, you're going to find most of your rifles run between five pounds and 8.5 pounds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take the trigger spring off the trigger, take the disconnector spring out, and take the hammer spring off the hammer. Set the disconnector aside for now. Open up our JP Enterprises Enhanced Reliability Spring Kit. Drop those three springs out. We're going to install our yellow trigger spring. You want to install your spring so the legs are to the front. Okay, and this bar right here is going to ride underneath the front bar on your trigger. Okay. Easiest way I found to do this is slide it straight up your trigger like that. 
Okay, and then just open up the spring. You get one side on, rotate it forward, lift the other side up and over. Okay, and then you want it to ride on your trigger just like that. So I'm going to put my disconnector spring in. It came with the JP Enterprise spring kit. I'll put my disconnector back on. Either one after I drop this in, I'm gonna drop this back in our trigger jig, drop the disconnector in, push everything down, and try to get it lined up. Okay, put our pin through, and we're done with the trigger. And set our hammer spring to the side for now. Uh, the next part we're gonna be talking about is showing you how to modify your hammer. If you install this kit, put this hammer spring on and put it in there, it's gonna work, it's gonna function of course, but when you're using a weaker spring and a full weight hammer, it's gonna increase your lock time and it's gonna decrease the force of your hammer going forward to striking your firing pin. It's gonna lead to some light primer strikes, okay? I'm gonna show you how to modify this hammer to reduce the weight of it and give you more consistent and reliable ignition. It's also going to decrease your lock time to some extent. I don't have a measurement of exactly how much, but it's going to decrease it. Okay. You see some guys doing trigger jobs out there and they talk about taking and cutting off one leg you hammer spring or bending another leg you hammer spring and different things that can lead to a number of problems um, it is going to reduce your weight if you, your hammer pull to an extent but notice on your pins that go through to retain your hammer and trigger into your lower receiver hopefully you can see that okay, if it's going to focus but you got some dimples right here that's cut into the, uh, the pins. And I'll try to, I'll take some still photographs after I shoot this video and I'll try to um, edit them into the video so you can get a better understanding and see better. But when your trigger or your hammer is just sitting in your um, receiver, one, either one of your legs of your hammer is going to index in that notch. That ring notch that's cut around or cut into your pin. That helps retain your pins from walking out of your rifle. Okay. So if you're scared of cutting springs and stuff on your hammer, you can run into issues with your pins walking out. <coughs> your pins walk out, everything comes loose, and then your rifle doesn't function. Also, when you go bending or cutting one of the legs on your hammer spring, can cause things to get cocked out a little bit inside your um, lower receiver. And you can run into a whole bunch of different issues. I don't ever recommend following those cheap methods. This JP Enhanced Reliability Spring Kit right here runs about roughly $11 before shipping a handle. I think the last time I looked it was $10.95. Um, doesn't cost much at all. You're going to be retaining your uh, hammer and your um, trigger that's existing and your disconnector so really the only money you're spending in this trigger job is going to be the cost of buying the spring kits so you're looking at which shipping roughly what 20 23 dollars at the most um so it's you know not very expensive anybody can do this rather than spending hundreds of dollars on a geyser anybody that's trained. This is a different hammer and spring. I'm going to start hammer and trigger right here. And I'm going to just use these to show you something real quick. You'll see some guys talking about doing trigger jobs on well, AR. Talking about you need to go here and polish this surface here on your trigger. You need to polish this surface here on the back of your hammer. I'm here to tell you don't do it. Uh, AR hammer and triggers your mating services right here where your hammer and your trigger rest together. I'm going to try to get this up close to the camera so you guys can see better. You know, they interact like that right there. Okay. 
your trigger dips down and your hammer comes forward okay these surfaces come smooth from the factory if you've got a quality hammer and trigger a decent quality hammer and trigger they're good and smooth now these parts are only surface hardened now it's a very thin surface hardening and if you go in here and you start polishing stoning filing or sanding on these two surfaces right here and right here you're most likely going to remove that surface hardening or at least wear it thinner and what's going to happen is as you fire the rifle in a number of rounds it could be 5 15 30 50 100 a couple hundred just really depends on how much that surface hardening you remove or if you remove all of it for the first however many rounds it's going to feel really nice and smooth and crisp you're going to have a really nice trigger pull however after that surface hardening wears through what you're going to have is it's going to start wearing this metal where these two points interact it's going to wear that metal you're going to wind up cutting a groove in the front face of your trigger and it's going, you're going to start getting a bushy trigger after that at some point if it wears enough you could start having an issue where it double fires or triple fires or it wears to the point where this doesn't even engage and catch the hammer and hold it back reliably anymore and then you wind up firing the whole gun basically full automatic until every single round empties from your magazine and you can't stop it or control it until it empties out when well, not only is that a safety issue um but you could also run some trouble with atf on that as well don't do it don't uh, don't ever polish stone grind file sand or do anything to this surface right here and this surface right here ever okay now we've got that out of the way I'm gonna go ahead and install this spring on this hammer I'll show you the proper way to install it a lot of you common malfunctions where your AR don't um, cycle right or you get light primer strikes is because someone installed your spring on your hammer wrong your hammer spring should be like this okay these legs right here should be forward of your hammer and this tail right here should be at the rear of your hammer on this surface right here if this is on the front it may fire sometimes but it's not going to fire all the time okay you always want this on the back and that's what gives you your tension you need when that hammer is rotated back and engages this um, trigger right quick I'm going to install this into this trigger gene so these can be a little bit tricky. Okay. Now using this trigger jig, I want to show you how the AR trigger platform works. I'm gonna stand up here so I can get closer to the camera. When your rifle is at rest, or your action is at rest in your rifle, your um, hammer is not cocked. This is how it sits in your rifle, okay? When you cock and charge your rifle, your hammer's gonna come back. And you can see right here where your hammer engages the front surface of your trigger. This is basically, just, these two surfaces is basically your sear surface. Although an AR doesn't particularly have an individual sear, like some guns. But this is basically your sear surface right here where they have the two meet and engage, okay? You pull the trigger, trigger drops down until it releases the hammer your hammer goes forward impacts your firing pin and it detonates your primer all right talk this again you fire your trigger and hold the trigger back okay your bolt and everything will come back after the round is fired due to the recoil and the gas system it'll push your firing pin back and it's going to, you see that disconnector move back? It's going to move back with enough force until your disconnector engages your hammer on this hook right here on the back of your hammer. Okay? 
you see how to hook on your disconnector is engaged with that and that is what keeps the rifle semi-automatic when you release the trigger that hook will slide off and in front of your trigger right here will engage your notch on the back of the hammer and set it back up and it's ready to fire okay it's important that you do not mess with your disconnector you don't mess with this hook here on the back of the hammer that the disconnector catches into okay because what happens is if you mess with this surface here grab it if you mess with this surface here on the back of your hammer or you mess with this hook on the front of your disconnector you can mess up the semi-automatic function of the rifle and cause it to go full auto again this is not a way to convert it to full auto because what's going to happen is you're going to have no control over it. If you've messed this up to where this disconnector does not hold this hammer back, when you fire around, your hammer's going to come back and it's going to automatically just let loose. And it can miss this trigger surface right here and the hammer's just going to repeatedly bounce back and forth until you run ammunition. There's no way to stop it. Okay? Now it may not. It may catch on the trigger like it's supposed to or it could miss it there's it's a very fine line right here between your trigger coming up enough to engage with the disconnector not working properly okay don't mess with those surfaces not only is it dangerous you can find yourself in trouble with ATF okay so I'm gonna take this back out and now we're going to talk about how to modify this hammer. I'm going to take a, you can use a Dremel tool or whatever. I've got a tool here. It's basically a cheaper version of a Fordham tool. You're going to have a few cut off discs. You're probably going to need a few. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put this shaft here Just start tightening the plug out just a little bit and screwing the work. And this is a cheap unit I got and this has got a foot pedal control for a power. This is a cheap unit I got off of uh, Amazon or eBay. I list them a couple hundred bucks. I can't remember the exact price. I've had it for years. Whereas the actual authentic Fordham tool is going to run you, the last time I remember, three or four hundred dollars, maybe more. I can't remember. It has been a while since I looked at them. This works just as good. I've got zero complaints with it whatsoever, and I've had it for years. And it's basically just this labeled a flex shaft grinder it doesn't have a name brand on it it works extremely well okay If you've ever worked with uh, these flexible cut-off discs, highly recommend you wear some eye protection. It's going to make some dust too, but I'm not really worried about that. If you want to wear a face mask or a respirator, that's up to you. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut off this back hook right here on this hammer. This back hook here. What I want to do is keep it pretty much in line. Let's see if I've got. Yeah, I'll grab these. Uh, new gauges right here. Okay, so what I want to do is pretty much take it off where I've got a straight line 
with this six disc brace portion right here, okay? And I'm gonna want to cut off the entire back hook of that hammer. Okay, just like that. Can do this on a grinder take an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel you can take a bench grinder and you can grind this down however i don't recommend doing that because you're going to get the metal extremely hot and if you do it fast enough you can get it glowing red um, so i'm just going to do it with this and then we're going to touch it up and shape it up with the angle grinder okay It's gonna be warm, just a heads up. This does this process does create a good bit of heat. Alright. So when you're done, you should have something that looks it's hot. Like something pretty close to that, okay? Now you notice we don't have this great big hook on the back of the hammer anymore. It's just a nice straight bar. Okay. Now we're not done yet. I'm also going to get back on here and we're going to shape this up and smooth it out a little bit on the belt sander. And you see how this portion right here is raised on either side. Okay, we're going to go back and we're going to narrow that down as well on the belt sander. Alright, now I'm going to stop the video here to get set up over there. Okay, we're back set up here at the belt sander. My lighting over here on this side ring was not as great, so I apologize for that. And what we're going to do, I've locked this into a pair of um, very small vice grips. You want to grip it up here by the front and not on the back side, okay? If you see where I got it gripped right here, just front of the um, notch where your pin goes through. If I grip very tightly there, it's not going to damage anything that's going to affect, affect the function, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my belt sander and I'm just going to touch this up on the back surface right here. Okay, and smooth that out where we cut it off with the grinding wheel. Actually, I'm going to do that on the side right here where I can keep it parallel on this grinding wheel. Okay. since it's hot all right so once you got that now I'm gonna come back on the sides and I'm gonna remove just a little bit of that hump on either side of it okay take your time on this don't go too fast and you don't want to get this too hot
this all ground down nice and smooth now. And I've removed a lot of weight of that hammer from the hammer hooks and the sides, and the hammer is now narrower. Okay, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. It's still going to work. So I'm going to end this video. I'm going to switch back over and get it set back up. All right, everyone. Back from the segment. I uh, actually went and grabbed something to eat right quick. I let this hammer dry, or rather cool down from where we had uh, done all the sanding on it. Okay, so now you can see that we removed quite a bit off the back, removed that entire hook off the back of the hammer, and we removed a right good bit of this raised portion on the other side of the hammer. And now you've got a nice, straight, much lighter hammer than it was originally. So now we're going to install our hammer spring. Again, you want this portion of the spring behind the hammer. Just like that. So now we're going to install this back in our trigger jig. Now, I've got it back installed in the trigger jig. I'm going to cock it, pull the trigger. That definitely feels nicer than before. And you can almost see how your lock time is reduced. It doesn't take quite as long for it to hit the, the um, rubber bumper here once you pull that trigger. All right. Now, if you did this properly, and you didn't mess with your hammer hook or dismember hook, everything should be fine. But if you want to test it, go ahead and pull it back, release it, and everything is engaging just like it should. Okay? So now that we got this together, grab our glass back. And then we're going to take some measurements here. Gauge, put it on. All right, and that broke at two pounds, 15.4 ounces. On that first pull, set back up. Three pounds, 7.5 ounces. Three pounds, 8.6 ounces. Three pounds, 5.0 ounces. Two pounds, 7.4 ounces. And then I'm gonna leave that, uh, that one off a little bit. Two pounds, 14.1. <clears throat> over another mode and we had an average trigger pull of two pounds 14.4 ounces with a maximum 3.8 three pound 8.6 ounces and a minimum of two pounds 7.4 ounces so look at the average, we're averaging about a 50% reduction in the trigger pull. 
from our previous average of five pounds, 5.6 ounces to our new average of two pound, 14.4 ounces. So get a, about a 50% trigger pull reduction using this method here. And to further test it, pull everything out right here. install it into the actual receiver right here I always want to make sure those two legs that you spring on the trigger spring are down and forward okay put that in place drop the disconnector in place Have to play with this paper a little bit to get it in just the right spot so that it'll go through or the pen will go through it. What I have found helps is to start your pen in. Get it just flush with the channel where your disconnector rides in. Then set your disconnector right there. Push it down. And you'll feel the hole as you push on your pin from the side until it rides in place just like it's supposed to. Okay? Now we're going to put our hammer in. Your springs, your legs of your hammer spring, are going to rest right on top of your pin for your trigger. Okay, then you just push your hammer forward, hold it forward, and cock it back, and it should catch. Hold your finger over it because it can pop loose. And when it catches, you're going to have your holes almost lined up, but not quite. Okay, so start your pin and then just push down in front of your hammer until it all slides right in place. Okay, now I don't have. Buffer there, so I'm gonna put this one, I'll hold this one in place, and we're gonna test the trigger pull. And that felt good. Felt really good. Okay. So now this is gonna hurt a little bit, but I'm gonna hold my finger there. So it don't damage anything. Try to get over here to the side right there. There we go. Alright. We're going to test the pull and the actual rifle. Okay, I messed that pull up. I kept pulling after it released. Three pound, 1.9 ounces for the first pull. Pound 11.8 ounces for the second pull. Two pounds 7.3 for the third. Three pounds 10.4 for the fourth. I pulled out a little bit beyond what it's supposed to have been. Three pounds 0.7 ounces on that one. And we're gonna go one more. Ow. That hurt. And I pulled that one too heavy, so I'm gonna release that. We'll delete that one. Uh, three pound thirteen point four ounces. Okay. So again, just a little bit of variance there, not much. Uh, that leaves me with a three pound, 1.7 ounce average. A three pound, 10.4 ounce maximum and a two pound, 7.3 minimum. And I pulled a few of those a little bit past where it released. And I felt that when I done them, 
but uh, again, you're seeing similar results between the trigger jig and the rifle itself. Alright, so there you go. Here's how to do AR-15 trigger job for roughly $11 plus shipping handling for the spring kit. Like I said, always make sure if you're going to be using this for defensive purposes or for duty carry, make sure that you test this extensively for whatever ammunition you're going to be using and make sure you get reliable ignition. I said I've never had this system fail to detonate anything I've shot through it. And I've tested a bunch of ammo. But if you're trusting your life to it, make sure it works for you. Other than the issue of potential for some primers to not certain primers to not detonate reliably. This trigger job right here is completely safe. It will not fail. It will not damage your rifle. And you don't have to worry about it um, wearing out beyond if you eventually wear out the springs after to replace them. Like I said, it can be done for about eleven dollars plus the cost of shipping handling for the springs. And that's all the money it's going to cost you. And that's a really nice pull and trigger pull. Also, always make sure you, when you reassemble, you test to make sure that it returns to safe and fire like it's supposed to. And hold the trigger back, let it hit the phone disconnector and release. And make sure it catches on that second sear surface or your primary sear surface. Just quick punch and shake to make sure everything's working like it should. Hope you guys found this helpful. Thank you for watching and have a great day.